From the St. Francis Yacht Club in San Francisco, this is the Wednesday Yachting Luncheon, hosted by Ron Young. Welcome to the Wednesday Yachting Luncheon, live from the virtual grill room of the St. Francis Yacht Club. We hope that you and your family are safe, sheltering in place in a comfortable environment, and we look forward to greeting you back in our Yacht Club just as soon as conditions permit. We're beginning to have some meals at the YC right now, and it's beautiful to be back in the uh, live face-to-face -face company of our friends and, and guests. Let's see a little bit about our speaker today. Born in Brooklyn, New York, and a lot of famous people were born in Brooklyn, New York. He grew up in New Jersey, and uh, beginning at age six, started sailing lightnings. Now there is a cool one-time Olympic sailboat class. He was a junior sailor at Raritan YC and continued his sailing career until he went off to Lehigh University where he would get a BS in econ and finance. He would then go on to get an MBA at New York University. And then if he wasn't educated enough, he went on to get a marine engineering degree from Calhoun University in Bulimer. Say it right, Bulimer. He would then go on to a 30-year career in the merchant marine as a marine engineer, shipping out all over the world, spent probably in elapsed 12 years at sea, and counts 25 Panama Canal crossings, four Suez Canal crossings. He's been to Puerto Rico and parts all over the Caribbean, you know, more than 40 times. For years, he did a run from New work New Jersey down to Valparaiso, Chile, sending them tires and appliances and getting back bananas and raw material. His standard fare were 500 to 800 foot steamships. And when I say steam, I mean steamships. Across the span of his career, they went from boom carrying cargo uh, ships to the big revolution to containers. He's got incredible, great stories about making sure that the customs officials in various ports and other people were suitably motivated to let their cargoes go through, especially during times when there were labor strikes of every sort. He didn't meet Harry Bridges, but everybody who worked in the waterfront in San Francisco knew about the legacy of the one-time great labor organizer, and I'm going to say commie Harry Bridges because friends of my parents also knew Harry Bridges, so you've got all these colorful characters on the waterfront. He then, in 2006, retired from his career as a marine engineer to become an artist. He'd painted in high school, but gave up sailing to paint and gave up painting to go to school. And so after he retired, he went back to painting. And since he resumed his painting career, uh, he has been in five juried shows, 10 group shows, and one solo show. And I would say he's on the spectrum. That is the artist spectrum. Uh, he's probably someplace between student artist and emerging artist, by his own words, on his way to becoming a mid-career artist and someday potentially a seasoned artist. He takes all this with what you're going to see is a very fun tongue-in-cheek approach to art. And as a young person myself, I had as many units in art at San Francisco State as science. And so I recognize what it's like for a person to put their artistic career kind of on the shelf while they go off and, and earn a living. So uh, with that, it's really my pleasure to introduce Mitch Sihomsky. Mitch, welcome to the Wednesday Yacht and Luncheon. Thank you, Ron. Thank you for the nice introduction and thank you for everything you do for doing the Wednesday luncheons. The membership of the Yacht Club really appreciates that and it's a lot of work, I know. As you know, I'm a painter and I paint in plein air, that means in white, and I paint in the studio. Every day I come to my studio and I treat it like a nine to five job. I treat it you know, fairly serious. And on days I don't come to the studio, I like to paint outside. And my pride painting is the San Francisco Bridge. This was featured at the D. Young Museum in a show last year. And it was also selected for the cover of their journal. I used a photographic reference from sailing underneath the bridge uh, one day. I, I photographed the North Tower and I, I just made this painting. It was a lot of fun. And um, I love the light off the girders and it, it worked out well. As you know, I'm a graduate student now at the Academy of Art University. 
and I need to um, produce a thesis portfolio. And doing that, I had to pick a theme. A teacher one time told me, you know, paint what you're passionate about. Both Nancy, my other half, and I love to travel. So let me talk about this is a studio piece. And a studio piece is a little bit involved. I, I use photographic references. And I have a lot of photographic references of, of travel. So I will use these in the studio to actually paint off of. And uh, they work pretty well. And in this piece, this is the reference. And this is a little town called Larici. Larici is on the Cinque Terre. And it's, it's just um, the Bay of Poets right there in Italy. And it's a town that no tourists go to. So we go there quite often. And um, it, it's, um, it's a fun town. And they have a little yacht club there. So I photograph this at the yacht club. And before I paint, I grid off the photo and draw it right onto the canvas. And I do a little study before that on a 11 by uh, 14 board. So I get my colors, I get my values correct, most of all, my drawing correct. So that's a studio piece. And here's at the Yacht Club in Lorici where I paint. And um, I normally paint standing up, but it was so inviting to have a drink and sit down. The next painting, this was featured at the Spring Show of the Academy of Art University in 2017. It's a little bit of a complex painting. So I did a detailed drawing and I literally just filled in the value and the, the color. My next drawing that I'm really proud of, another studio piece, is California Dreaming 2018. Uh, California Dreaming is an event put on by Bruce Stone and Nicole Brault. It's a J22 match race. This is a weekend. So Saturday they had wind and they had a couple races go off and then the wind died down. And on Sunday, there was literally no wind, but the bay was shrouded by fog and everyone rafted up. And I had a photo of this and I took a, you know, I made a painting out of it. And I'm proud to say it's hanging up at the Yacht Club as we speak, it's in their collection. And I had to do a detailed drawing I, I did a couple studies here are the references at the bottom of the page and then I did a couple of the oil paintings of it before I did the other painting and I did one watercolor and that one watercolor I gave to Jen Lancaster the sailing director uh, as a gift when she left the yacht club that is how I paint in the studio and I'm going to demo how I paint when I do plein air so that's a canvas in your studio right now yeah this is a canvas in the studio and I'll, I'll, after I, I do this, I'll circle around the studio. You so, buy you buy pre-stretched canvas. You don't stretch yourself, right? Well, this is a panel board. What's the benefit of using a panel board over a stretched yeah. canvas? I'll, I'll show you what I use. I will use panel board because it's easy to bring around. And I have several sizes that I will use. And I will carry with me when I go outside. But lately, I've been using a 16 by 20 piece of canvas. Do you buy those at Michael's? Where do you buy stretched canvas? Well, I, I usually buy everything at Blix or I buy it from Flax downtown. Right now, Flax is in, in Fort Mason. So that's where I buy my, my materials from. And when I paint, I use a simple process, Ron. I make a drawing and then I put it in my shadow shapes. I block in my mid values. I'm going to establish what's called my lightest lights and my darkest darks. Then I come through and I detail what's called a focal point. And let's go ahead and, and do this real quick. I've made up, I have a palette. And I kind of keep it simple. I, I use, I have a, a white and a, a warm white, a yellow, another yellow ochre, some red, a crimson, um, a, a brown and blue, and some greens and sky blue. And I'm going to go ahead and do the steps. I'm going to come in real quick and just outline that little hill. And I'm just going to briefly give myself some, some um, idea of what, what I want to paint and the dark right here. And then I've got a little lake or, or I have a, a little valley in here. And then I have the putting green right here. And so I provided enough information I need right now 
to make a painting. And I'm gonna put in my darks, my shadow shapes right in here. And I do this real quick. And I'm gonna come in here and actually just to scrub it in. I got a little bit of shadow shape right here. I got some more right here. And I'm gonna just gonna come right in here, make this as dark as needed. Just kind of right in here. And I got some down here and right in here, I'm gonna come right across. Now I'm, I've established all my shadow shapes and I don't have to be real neat about it. You know, especially if, if I'm doing it real quick. Yeah, you don't seem to be being real neat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so I, I warm it up a little bit. Uh -huh. Now with, with that statement, I'm going to come in and put my mid values in. I'm going to block in the rest of the painting. I work from top down. So I'm going to put my blue sky in. You know, I'm not going to labor over it too much. Normally, how long would it take you to do a painting like this when you're all finished? You're not doing it in front of a camera like this. Well, you know, I, I was outside plein air painting. I would be about an hour, hour and a half. Because mm -hmm. I would be taking my time a little bit. Mm -hmm. But here, I'm just like, this is supposed to be five, 10 minute painting. And so I'm going to come in here and, and put some blue in. And I'm going to just add, add just a tiny bit of, of, of white. So a little bit of. Um, because it gets lighter as you go down the horizon. And so now I blocked in the blue and I'm gonna go ahead now and, and get my greens in. And if you notice what size brush I'm using, I'm using a fairly larger brush than, than you, would, you would think. These are the mid values and, and a little bit in here, a little bit, um, a little bit of value in here. I love to go golf, but if, if I, double my par. In other words, if I'm on a par three and I get six, I, I'm, I, I consider that pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we enjoy, we enjoy a once a year golf outing. And um, yeah, it's, it's fun. We do golf. So now I essentially blocked in this painting. And the next step I'm going to do, I'm going to concentrate on my light of light. And my light of light happens to be right along this edge right here. My darkest dark is gonna be right in here. So now I have the basics of the painting and I'm gonna go ahead and fine tune now and do my focal point. But you know, I have some trees up here. So I'm just gonna put some, some, some trees in to make it look like um, it's something. And I don't really have to spend too much time detailing them to so some abstract shapes work. And then my last step, I'm gonna take another brush. If you notice, I have a shadow shape right on the, I'm gonna make a little cup, and then I'm gonna come up. I'm gonna just highlight a little bit. Oop. Now I got my pin. With that established, I'm gonna go ahead and make a red flag. And so now in, in a couple minutes, I created a painting. And what happens is that this is my focal point in here. So the eye will come in and hit this lightest light, go to the darkest dark, and will come over to the red and back and forth. Part of this was you framing the shot when you took the photograph. You actually were composing in, in the camera before you started painting in a way, oh, too. Oh, absolutely. When I'm at the Art Academy, they, they actually train you in composition. And part of the composition is photographing. And so actually, if I wanted to, this should have been over a little bit because your focal points go into the corner and never mm -hmm. in the center. This is a little bit centered. I should have put it over here. But, you know, that's a correction that... that um, you know, for the demo, it's fine. And then I have other paintings on the wall. Real quick, here was a, a painting of Sausalito, plein air, right from, from the bay. And I had- so you, were on a, you were on a boat when you did that, I'm assuming? Oh, no, 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 no. Took a photograph and then went, went back? Yeah. And, when and you said plein air, I always thought plein air meant you were painting it on site. On site, well, here, so I, I set my easel up Percy Field. And, and this came out of that, right? Okay. Where, where we come out of the uh, West Basin. Yeah. 
That's where that came from. And then here I set up off of Chestnut Street in, um, and, and painted this. And likewise, this one came from the West Marina. So I do, you know, paint outside. And uh, interestingly, one, one of my better paintings, I think, was the um, Stinson Beach. And everyone sets up and they paint the water. I turned around and painted the little mountain. And so this is plein air. And then I took that back into the studio and, and I made a little studio painting of it. So I, so I have more paintings. What is that big piece of metal there? It looks like a big uh, stat camera or something. That's a brush washer. That, that's a washing station. Okay, so got I it. wash out my brushes there. I hate to make everyone dizzy, but but here's some some paintings, and here's a painting that I've been trying to work on. It has good bones, but I'm not finished. I, I I'm going to change the coloring. Um, here's another little painting I'm working on. So it, there's a lot of stuff um, that that I do. A lot of different styles. How often do you complete a painting? Give me a sense of your cycle time. The plein air paintings, hour and a half, two hours. And then other paintings that I labor will be much more. I probably have 12 to 14 hours in this painting right here. Um, Park City, I probably have 14 to 15, two days in here at least. And same thing uh, about a day and a half to two days labor in here. Contrary to that, this little painting was Larici again. This got into a spring show at the Art Academy of uh, 2019. And, and that was quick. That was um, about one drink worth at the Yacht Club. <laughs> and another little painting that I really liked was this one. And this was from Florence. Um, for every summer we go to Florence and I paint. I try to paint where John Singer Sargent painted. And, um, you know, it, it's just fun. It's just super fun. While you're walking over there, I want to cover something else. Now, you are also one of the most thoughtful, diligent, and generous of uh, volunteers on the race committee. I constantly see you on We Willie when we had We Willie and otherwise in race, um, um, you know, management. Well, how many races a year do you work in the race committee for St. Franny? Up. Uh you know, between 30 and 40, probably. 30 and 40 uh, races. Now, now I'm probably going to cut down to about 20, 22, 23, 24. But um, one time, I, I, I think I worked 49 or so, or, or just a lot. You know, when you count Wednesday nights, I used to do Wednesday nights. I used to race the folk boats um, with Don Wilson and with um, Brock. Uh, we used to race uh, the folk boats Wednesday nights and then then I got into school and 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 um, I stopped racing folk boats. But I, thanks to Bruce Stone and Nicole, I picked up on the uh, uh, mark set. Yeah, and that's great. Fun. We have to always tip our hat to the race committee because we couldn't go out there and mess about in boats were it not for the thoughtful work of volunteers. I always see you out there. So please accept my thanks on behalf of all the other racers who are constantly appreciative when you guys move a mark. Thank you. Um, our pleasure. I'm sure the whole race committee will, it, will be happy to hear that. Thank you, Ron. Let me go back and show you some more plein air paintings. Beautiful day. A little detail of that. And, and some more detail. Real quick, kind of thick impasto painting. It's so uh, fun. My God, these are cool. Yeah. Oh, this is right from the, that was from right from the Yacht Club. Here's another Palace of Fine Arts. Here's a mistake. Here's <laughs> Tahoe. I was up at Tahoe in the wintertime at a friend's house right on the lake. And Great piece. And here's, here's again, here's the watercolor at Naples um, Boatyard. How long on that watercolor? You, you and I know watercolor is a whole separate process. Whole separate. Some watercolors move really fast and others don't. This piece, probably I had three or four or five hours in, in that watercolor. Mm -hmm. you know, and and it, it's, it's been fun. Here's another watercolor, and this was really quick. This is from, from where that beautiful red Hinkley is uh, in the first row, right by the Yacht Club, looking east from the West Basin. This okay. Early morning. This, is, this happened to be 6 o'clock in the morning. I was taking the boat over to uh, Oakland to do motor work, 
And we were coming out, I snapped a photo and this painting came from that. So given that you're a, literally a licensed marine engineer and you had a 30 plus year career being a marine engineer, how often do buddies like me say, oh, wait a second, my diesel, something wrong with my diesel. Would you listen to it? No, I left my big hammer back at the ranch. So, <laughs> I take I take my boat over and have it done professionally. Let's put it that way. <laughs> so you can't be tricked into giving advice to your fellow uh, yachtsmen, huh? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And here's a little painting in Maboli Gardens in Florence. Again, John Singer Sargent used to paint there, and I used to go in there and just try to find out where he painted and paint in the same spots. The scene is Lake Tahoe again, wintertime. And again, here, here was a Paris. You know, these are all quick. Here's Venice. And here was a painting that I'm working on in the studio that I'm quite not satisfied with, but working on it slowly. That was the, the plein air version. Um, here's a mistake. Well, another mistake. Tell me what's the mistake part. First of all, the photo's out of focus. <laughs> and and I, I personally don't like it. It's too clunky. It's just... Um, um, yeah, you know, the brush strokes are good, but but it just doesn't read to the viewer. Okay. So that reads to the viewer and it's mm -hmm. not reading. People will say, well, what is that? And and that's not what I want. I want something that conveys a message and conveys so the viewer knows and can appreciate what it is instead of like scratching their head, like, what is it? And here was the studio right up looking over toward um, Tiburon and here Baker Beach. I kind of enjoy going out there because there'll be people that swim and will come up to you and watch you paint and talk to you. And this is Park City. So my theme, again, for the Art Academy thesis is travel. So this is um, Minneapolis. And this is, again, this is uh, somewhere in Italy and bad trees. And, and this is Tennessee Valley. And then here, here is a, a painting, again, looking north from um, Marin Headlands and uh, some watercolor, and again, a, a barn, Pennsylvania. And um, this is Fossily, just a suburb of uh, Florence. You take the number eight bus and you go out there and paint in lovely restaurants and nice area. I enjoy painting there. So you said, I liked painting there. Tell me what happens in an environment where you like painting. What is it that would make you say, I liked painting there? It has a great view. It has shadow shapes. It has um, definition. It has a feel. And you, if you could convey the feeling, that's what makes makes something really beautiful. This particular forest scene, where is this shot? Where'd you do this? Marin. This is Marin. I was hiking in to do some plein air painting, and I took a shot. So this is a studio uh, painting. I, I would march in with a backpack. You know, I have all my paint supplies, my easel and everything. And I'll hike into an area. And I'll take it off and, and I always have a cell phone with me. And so I, I snapped a picture and used it as a reference and, and came out with this piece. And which is an honest piece. And, and here's a piece that um, um, is okay. It, it's, it's, um, it has the big log across. So your eyes kind of stop at the right. log. The design element, your compositions, you're consistently kind of designing in composition. I can see that, you know, basically big swaths of color that basically, you know, graphically kind of posterize the idea. Right, Ron. And so here, and here's Minneapolis. Um, this worked pretty well. Is that the eggs? Are the eggs done? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we're done here. But um, <laughs> here again, here's the little painting from Larici. And I had such an enjoyable time. What, what made that worthwhile was sitting at the Yacht Club. I break out my painting supplies. I have a drink. Nancy has a drink. And people are coming over and looking and talking to you in Italian and, you know, and, and wondering what you're doing there. And I, I have the St. Francis hat on and they look and they say, oh, okay. You know, they recognize it right away. And it, it works out well. And here was um, a little painting looking toward a Tiburon from um, uh, Sausalito and um, just fun. And here are little, little figures. So I do paint some figures. Where was that shot? In, in Paris, yeah, we, we enjoy Paris a lot. And then our favorite place in France is Cartray, which is uh, in North of France, right off of the coast of Normandy, going toward the, the Channel Islands. And we've been to Cartray 18, 19 times. And so this was produced up there. And uh, we really enjoy that. And again, here's Sausalito. And here, here's a preliminary drawing for Martha's Vineyard. So here's a final of Martha's Vineyard. Island of Man. So I went up to the Island of Man and painted right between Ireland and England, 
left uh, Liverpool and took a ferry over to the Island of Man. What a fun place to paint. And um, again, here from Marin. Um, Great trees. Tennessee Valley. And, and this is uh, Minneapolis. So this is right where the Sundance festivals have been. And we, we get there every once in a while. And then again, the barns of Pork City. And then here's my first oil painting as an adult. What year was this? This was 2011. Okay. And so I was 55 or somewhere in there when I painted this. And this was at, at UC Berkeley. And um, I, I kept it because it was perhaps one of the most fun and rewarding pieces I've done. And then my final piece is this Golden Gate Bridge, North Tower from just the opposite view. And it was shrouded in fog. So I call this shrouding in fog. And this will currently be in the um, spring show at the Academy Art University in 2021. And so I'm proud to do that, but you know, I'm gonna take this piece and go back and put it up on the easel. Let's go back to the easel real quick. Wonderful, wonderful. When you look at this painting, do you think to yourself, I wanna do A or B or C on it? I just think it needs a little bit more definition. Okay. So well, let's see if I ruin it or make it better. <laughs> so here, here's a, a good painting. And let me take a little bit of- Are we paying you hourly? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to come in here. I'm just going to try to pick up a little bit of a highlight. Oh, no, I don't think that's working that well. But anyway, I tried to improve it. And I improved it just a little bit too much. <laughs> but you see, you can always go back and rework it. Can you do, you can cover over with gold right now with the rust color if you want to, right? That's correct. That's correct. How, and how dry the original piece is, is days old, so it's dry underneath there, right? That's correct. So what I did, Ron, was I probably had showed you the way I paint. And again, I paint in the studio and I paint plenier. And it's fun. I recommend anyone that is interested in painting. In fact, I, I recommend anyone that's interested in pursuing anything to do it with gusto and spirit and, and, and joy of life. Mitch, tell me, where were you when you heard one of your pieces oh. was going to be exhibited in the Dion? You know, I was sitting at home. We have a this round table. We had a great view of the of the bay from from the house. And I was just ecstatic. I was just floored. You know, I was amazed because what a privilege. You know, all the great art that's been hung at the D. Young and all the people that filter through there. What a just a feeling of joy. It, it is if you were asked to race in America's Cup. But, you know, it's not the stopping point. I'm going to go forward from here and do more. So now when you go to the Academy of Art College, you see all these young kids, all these young, talented kids. Talk to me about being uh, a guy in his later years, but you're an emerging artist for heaven's sake. You're still in student artist mode. So you're there amongst a bunch of kids who are half your age or a third my age. Talk to me about what it feels like to be in that community with them. Well, you know, it's a great community and I really appreciate that. I'm not the oldest. We have a Frenchman. Alan, I used to call him Alex, and I figured out his name's Alan. And so Alan has 10 years on me, and he's painting right beside me. We talk all the time. He lives in, in the South Peninsula and has a house in Reno and, and lives in France part of the year, and which is interesting. But the young kids, they're, they're terrific, and they, they accepted me, um, you know, just as, as one of them. So we communicate, we talk often. Uh, Pre COVID, we'd be in the studio and, and we would get lectured to for about an hour, then we would paint and people put on music and, and my favorite teachers would put on you know, like the sixties and, and the oldies and you know, that type of music. And, and I could paint away and there, and they have question marks, like what's this, what, I've, I've never heard this song before, you know? So it's kind of that type of thing, but it's really, it's a pleasure to be with the young people. When I was a high school kid and I started painting, my our art teacher always played always played Gershwin. When I would go into class, he always played Gershwin. So I learned, I heard all of Gershwin over and over and over again. And it became kind of like a set and setting. Remember when Timothy Leary was at Harvard, he wrote about set and setting. This was a set and setting. So every time I, uh, you know, would go into an art class, we'd hear Gershwin. So ever since then, I mean, decades ago, 
when I hear Gershwin, I, I'm brought back to being this kid painter, playing in oils and 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 drawing and so on. And so, what what kind of music do you like to listen to in your painting? Well, you know, I like to listen to classical music, especially like classical Tom Petty. You know, so I, I listen to <laughs> in other words, yeah, yeah. So I listen to all kinds of, of music and it, it varies. Sometimes it's disco music, sometimes it's, it's classical music and sometimes it's Tom Petty, you know, Neil Young, and of course the Beatles and so the whole rampant. And in fact, you know, sometimes when I'm doing abstract or, or just feeling in the mood, you know, the disco, um, uh, dance music, you know, the current music. So it's all part of, part of that, yeah. I, I just like it all. So now give me a day in the life. When you're painting, when do you start? When do you finish? Well, I like to say I start like, let's just say we're in Florence and my day, I get up early and I, of course I read all the news and this and that, but I'll go out on the bike about eight o'clock in the morning and I have all my kit with me and I'm up painting about 830 in the morning. So morning hours are usually good and late evening hours are good. So I will paint, I will paint a painting, you know, between eight and 10 have coffee and then paint probably another one between uh, 11 and, and 12, have lunch, come back uh, somewhere and, and paint between one and, and, and two or three. And then I'll do a fourth painting sometimes between you know five, six and, and finish up, up around 6.30 at night and come home, shower and um, go out to have dinner and do it all over again the next day. So that, that's typical in, in Florence. Um, <laughs> You know, it's nice. If I don't go to the gym, um, I'm, I'm painting, so. So now a, a good day, what, what's the work output of a good day? Is it number of paintings? Is it having got a certain view? Is it playing with a different technique? What's a good day? Well, that's a good question. Um, some days it depends what your goal is. So every day you have a goal. And early on, my goal was to get 300 plus paintings. Uh, plein air paintings because I had an art teacher uh, one time tell me a good friend of mine, um, Alvin Castango, he's a watercolor. He says, Mitch, if you want to get good, you have to paint 300 plein air paintings. And so my goal was to do 300 paintings, and I did those. Um, and so if it's painting paintings, three or four paintings work. That, that's a day's work. Um, usually one in the morning, one in the afternoon for a lot of people, but I, I was pushing it because I want to get my 300 in. So I, I can't tell you, it depends on the goal. The, the, here was a different quality. I wanted something um, to match the San Francisco icon, the one that got into the young. And, um, and then other paintings, I, I always have a goal, like, you know, I wanted to, to match I want to make a nice version of the plein air painting in the Stinson Beach. So I have different goals and, and, and just like sailing, you have different goals. If you go out practicing, you know, you're going to come around the mark. You're going to go, um, you know, make, make 20 mark roundings or uh, you know, jibe, this, you know, your, your spinnaker three or four or five times just to practice. So I, I do have, you know, those type of goals too. How often do you frame a painting? If I put it in a show, I frame it. I, I kept my frames, you know, all online often, or I will look at it framed. So I don't frame everything. And sometimes you don't need to frame it if you have the edges. Now this is a, a three quarter edge right here, but if you get an inch edge or, or greater, uh, you just paint that and you don't need to frame it. So it depends, it depends on, on where you're gonna hang it. So when I, I paint, I, I envision it on a wall and I envision what the viewer wants. And, and it's not about me, it's about the viewer. And so if the viewer, um, I, I don't want to do a decorative piece, but if the viewer could use it you know, in a certain location, you want to paint toward that goal. In other words, sometimes you want to paint a, a big portrait type of painting, or you want to paint a big landscape painting where it's going to be on the wall. And, and I'm all about placing the art and designing the house around the art. You know, the piece over your shoulder, what's fascinating is that when you put those, the, the bit of yellow highlights 
on the closest tower to us, my eye key is, keeps being drawn to it. And while the composition has a nice diagonals and causes you to move your eye around, I keep looking at the two latest pieces that you did to it, the little dabs here and there, which is interesting because it is, it may be because I saw you do it, maybe for some other reason, but you know, uh, you do have a designer eye to what you're up to. I see that's been all the way through consistent in your stuff. You, you and I know that in order to take a shot, take a photograph, you got to basically frame a shot in the camera. And uh, that's expressed in all the pieces I see that you're, that you're constantly doing very, very fun. So that particular piece now, where is that going to go next? Where, where can you tell me what you think is going to happen to that painting? It's, it's for sale from one. What do things cost? You know, usually as a student, it's length times width times two. So, so this, this painting here is um, uh, 22 by 28. Okay, so now you were a business and econ major. And just to support you, I quickly have my calculator. And I count that be $1,232 dollarinos. Is that about right? Well, you round it down to 1200 to 1195 <laughs> <laughs> What can I tell you? <laughs> you know, I, what can I tell you? The MBA from NYU, it shows through. You can take the boy out of NBA school, but you can't take the MBA out of the man. <laughs> you got it. You got it. Yeah. So do you miss going to sea for like weeks at a time, three or four or five weeks at a time? Ron, I never look back. No, I, I don't miss it at all. It's just, it's just like it never happened. I just so, you know, life here is such so much fun. San Francisco is so much fun. Sailing is so much fun. Um, just painting is so much fun. No, I, I don't miss it. Retirement a is- A scary moment in, in painting. Pardon me, my favorite moment? You're a scary, no, a scary oh. moment in painting. When have you been frightened when you're painting? I've been frightened a couple of times. Uh, the the crowds in in what's they Florence become immense, and um, you can't get to your painting like you back away. So so when you paint, you you back away and you look. You know you step back three or four or five feet and you take a look every every three or four minutes. And some place where you're painting, the crowds start coming between you and your painting, and you can't get and and you know the evil gets knocked down or you know paint gets scattered all over the ground. You got to like clean up the paint because because this is old property. You don't want to leave paint, you know. And so those were scary moments. So and then I was out in an electrical storm, you know, thunder and lightning painting. That was pretty scary. Um, one time you always take someone with you when you're painting around cars because you have a tendency to back out into streets, you know, look at your painting. You, you get so, you know, so, so I, I, I often have Nancy with me just to keep me in check so I don't do something stupid like that. Um, you know, so those are scary moments. And, um, you know, it's interesting you should say that. I have a favorite painting. Can I share that with you? Yes, please. This is a little plein air paper uh, painting on canvas and it's linen canvas and I just tape it to a board. And so I will paint on, on this often because it's lightweight, it travels well, but this is a fountain in Florence. I, I did one painting about from eight to about 10 and I set up about 10, 15 at this fountain and no one was around by, 10.35 or so, they had three or four or five people would stop and look at a fountain. And then by 11 o'clock, hordes of people, just hordes of people. And I couldn't, I would back away. I couldn't get back to the painting. But I really enjoyed this because it reminds me of that instance where, where it was just kind of fun to paint. You get to do what you do partially because you have a wonderful wife, i.e. studio muse. And I want you to introduce Nancy. Can you introduce your student? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Nancy's great. I know great. about Nancy. Nancy's more valuable than one can imagine as a partner. Hey there. I, yeah, I, so, so this Nancy. And thank you for, for introducing her. She's been um, a good help and loyal and, and been, I, I, we've been, been having fun. We've been having fun for a How long, long have you guys been a, been a couple? Oh, many years. I'm at 26, 25. Yeah, yeah. yeah a long time. So, Nancy, what's it like being married to an artist? He's got to be constantly, he knows exactly what he wants. Talk to us about that process. Step closer to the camera. You're featuring you now. 
Okay. Most, most time it's fun. It, 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 <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's like, okay, can we do something other than paint? <laughs> but for, the, for the most part, it's fun. You get to go different places. You meet different people. I have not an artistic bone in my body. So um, Mitch does all the decorating at home. He does all the design work. So it, it's been a bonus for me because I don't have that skill set. Yeah, but I know your tech support. I know you know the computer side of the world real well. I can do tech support better than I can do painting. <laughs> so now what kind of excuses does he give you when he says he's going to do a race committee and you think he's going to get out on a boat and he's going to bob around there? Why? What does he say to you? Yes, I'm doing race committee. And you say you tolerate he that? Make me go with him and I do race committee on the signal boat a lot. Great. That's a that's a fun thing. Well, yeah, we're that's been fun. we met a whole bunch of people. I'm a late to life sailor, not an early sailor. So that's been really interesting. Well, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. Mitch and Nancy, thank you so much for being our guests on the Wednesday Yachting Luncheon. What a charmed and fun um, set of contributors you are to our Yacht Club community. And it's great to see your your stuff and now in the De Young, for heaven's sakes. And uh, good luck in future juried shows. And um, I have my eye on the painting on your shoulder, so don't tell anybody. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I think thanks. you said eleven ninety five. Rob, thank you so much for the opportunity to present my my work. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. With that, we adjourn the Wednesday Yachting Luncheon. Thank you. been a presentation of the Wednesday Yachting Luncheon.